Hi guys! Welcome to your weekly Twin Flame discussion. This is Divine Conversations. I am Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, as you can see, I'm back to my bubbly, happy disposition. Um, there hasn't been much of a development in my journey, but that's okay, because I'm good. I'm doing well. I'm happy. Yay! <laughs> a lot of the icky energy is gone. Um, Today is the 15th, so we are finally done with that Mercury in retrograde. I mean, it's not necessarily done yet. We'll still be moving through some of the energy. You'll still probably feel a little, some of the, some, a little bit of the energy moving forward for like the next five days or so, but <sighs> can we just... <laughs> I felt it, guys. I felt that sigh of relief. Yes. Okay, so twin flame discussion for the week. Uh, I just want to let you guys know I'm I'm changing things up a little bit. Um, I am doing I'm I'm doing two separate videos for the twin flames right now, or I'm going to be from now on. Um, we'll see how it goes. This is the first week I'm doing it. Um, I'm adding more work to my crazy workload already, but I can handle it. So let's do this. Yeah. The, so this is a video for, um, these are going to be messages for twins that are in separation, um, not in communication. Um, I'm going to do another video for twins that are either in union or at, or are at least in communication, um, in some sort of communication in regards to like their relationship, not just like friendly, haha, let's hang out. No, but like in some sort of real communication or are in union. Someone did make a suggestion um, uh, to that and I really resonated with that because I do see myself as a twin flame guide and I want to be available for more than just those of us that are in separation, right? So that's going to happen. Um, the The structure of the reading is going to be the same for those for this one. I'm going to do one for the Divine Masculine, one for the Divine Feminine. It's going to be my same setup. For the twins that are in union or in communication, I'm going to actually do a mirror reading for you guys um, because you're not necessarily separate from each other, physically speaking. Okay, so there's that. Um, I'm going to get straight to it. I don't really have much else to say. I want to just get into this video and not make it an hour long like the last two, right? Okay, great. Let's do this, guys. So um, I'm going to do the same thing I did last week. We are going to start with the energies for the Divine Feminine and then the Divine Masculine. Even though I did start with the Divine Masculine next, last week, I'm going to start with the Divine Feminine again this week. Um, just so you know, guys, I have started reading reversals, so don't get freaked out. Um, it's really not as bad as it seems. Um, and then I'm going to finish the sections off with a card from the Animal Spirit deck. This is one of my newer decks. I love this deck, guys. It is, it's the truth. <laughs> There's so much truth coming out of that deck. It's ridiculous. Okay, so let's get into this. We're starting with the Divine Feminine. Yes, Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Divine Feminine. At this time, please bring forward the best messages for the Divine Feminine at this time. Now, guys, remember that this is a general reading, so take what leave with leave, take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, if you do want more of a specific personal reading, please email me. I am available. All of the information is in the description box below. Yeah? So, Divine Feminine, let's get into it. Um I can say that already I'm just so relieved that the Mercury in retrograde is over. It's over, guys, at least for now. Like, that one, it was really powerful. It was really strong. But you know what, though? Like, a lot of really good healing came out of it. You know, I know personally I was able to work through a lot of things that were still holding me back. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was super beneficial. Super beneficial. So, all right. Divine Feminine. Whoops. Bear with me, guys. I do feel like I need to shuffle a little bit just to get into the mode. So just breathe in, breathe with me. Um, as I'm shuffling, you know, just clear your mind, connect with your breath, connect with your heart, and just, just let it flow, yeah? Just let it flow. Divine Feminine. All right, one more shuffle for you, for us. Divine Feminine, and then we'll see, we'll get into these messages. 
Please remember, guys, that these messages are not time sensitive. They are time is time is an illusion. Yeah. So whenever you come across this conversation and it resonates with you, the message was meant for you at that time. All right, divine feminine. To start, we have the Four of Wands. Get it, girl. So look, this foundations, these foundations you have, um, have been fortified. Okay, this is not just talking about your foundation with the relationship between you and your twin. This is more talking about your own foundation. I really feel like this Mercury in retrograde, whether uh, regardless of whether or not it was like super draining on you, maybe you, maybe you're one of the lucky few that really didn't feel much of anything. And to that, I say, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I'm jealous. How about that? But no, I'm kidding. But um, this really helped us really fortify, fortify a lot, a lot of stuff. Okay, um, underneath that we have the emperor in reverse. Okay, that's weird. We have the all gifted and we have the high priestess and we also have the king of cups, all right? So um, let's talk about this for a second. Now, the reason why the emperor is in reverse, this is not necessarily speaking to your divine masculine, okay? Well, for the most part, it's not speaking to your divine masculine. The first thing I picked up when the emperor came out was um, a, a disconnection with masculine energy. And then the all gifted came out. The all gifted is a card that is specific and unique to this deck. This is the Tarot Apocalypsis deck. The All Gifted speaks about, uh, well, it's a depiction of Pandora and Pandora's box. And um, it speaks about um, inner self-worth, your inner gifts that you have to provide for, um, to provide to um, the world. And, you know, how you can be of service to people and uh, sharing of yourself, giving of yourself, giving of these gifts that you were bestowed upon. That's when it's um, when it's upright. When it's reversed, it's like fear of yourself and all of that. A fear of your gifts, not holding uh, holding back, not really giving um, what you're here to give. Um, and so I didn't really understand what the emperor meant until the all the, the all gifted came out. For so so for some of you divine feminines, um, I feel like you're struggling a little bit with, um, you know, who you are, what you have to give to the world. Um, you're struggling with putting that into play, um, putting that into action with the emperor. Um, you know, you're struggling to move forward with how you want to make, how you want to manifest these things in your world. You may even be struggling just with your masculine energy as a whole, um, it could be that this Mercury in retrograde for you really brought to the surface some of the negative, twisted aspects and thoughts you've been holding for not just your divine masculine, but for masculine energy to begin with. Um, <clears throat> we also have the High Priestess here, which is talking about intuition, but it's also talking about secrets. And I really feel like the High Priestess ha is in relation to the emperor in reverse here. Now, as I was starting to talk about this, I was saying that I didn't really feel like it was much in the way of um, your divine masculine. But there was a voice inside saying, screaming, wait, no, yes it is. For some of you, this is your, your divine masculine. Um, and he's blocked, he's in resistance. Um, uh, but it really isn't as bad as you think because of the high priestess. It's just that there are secrets here. All right, there are secrets here. Um, the emperor is in reverse, so there is blockages here. And I really, for some reason, I feel like this is talking about, for some of you, what I'm getting is that your divine masculine is really going through a period where they're really redefining themselves. Because I'm looking at the emperor in reverse next to the, the all gifted and there could be some divine masculines out there that are in being influenced towards seeing more of their inner truth and seeing more of their higher, their higher calling. Um, there are a lot of secrets being kept right now with the high priestess. There really isn't much communication going on. I mean, we're in separation, so that makes sense. But then with the king of cups here, it's like love is flowing. I'm just feeling so much love com coming from this king of cups. And again, this would be coming from your divine masculine. 
Um, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of talk about the divine masculine for the divine feminine right now, but I really, I'm really picking up that this is mostly because we are influencing them so much. And it's not necessarily that we're influencing them on a physical level. We're influencing them on a, uh, on an energetic level because divine feminine is really doing, going within and doing her own healing. And, um, that in turn will influence our twin, just like the actions that our twins take influence us, you know, the divine masculine, the actions that the divine masculine takes influence the divine feminine and vice versa, right? Okay, let's get into um, the rest of the energies here. In your first position, we have your surrounding energies. We have the wheel in reverse. Okay, so, and that's right over the emperor in reverse. So there is some resistance to the end of his cycle, divine feminine. Um, I'm not... I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm not totally sure it's all coming from you. Although, there is, yeah, there has been a message lately. Something has been needing to come through for the Divine Feminine in the sense that um, it's really time to let go of the old paradigm. It's time to let 11-11 on the counter. It's time to let go of um, how the Divine Masculine, your Divine Masculine, has presented himself in... Um, in your reality and in, you know, your experience. Um, because the more you focus on this, um, out of line, out of alignment or a not aligned version of your divine masculine, the more you play that story out in your head and the more you, you know, daydream of scenarios with your divine masculine and he's still acting in ways in which are undesirable, the more of that you're going to get from him, the more of that you're going to see in his rea in your reality. So this is what uh, this is really the, a greater message as to why the emperor is in reverse here, and this is a message that I've actually been putting forward in the zodiac readings for the se for the second half of April, and actually something I've been wanting to talk to the divine feminine about. And this is exactly why you may have been in this separation stage for years. It's because um, you've been playing this 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 tape back in your head of how the divine masculine was instead of focusing on what you would want him to be like. Now, I'm not asking, we're not saying you get to manipulate him into the person you want him to be. No, but if you focus on what you want in a divine counterpart, how you would want your divine counterpart to treat you and love you, then you will manifest that. You will attract that. You will bring that part of your divine masculine out to the surface. So with the wheel in reverse and the emperor right next to the emperor in reverse, the universe is asking us divine feminines to really work on changing our view of how we see our divine masculine. Okay. But as I say that, my attention is really being drawn to the four of wands, which is, which is really reaffirming me that there is a very solid foundation here for the twins, okay? Even if, you, you know, even the twins in separation. Now, this is a reading for the twins in separation, so it's reassurance, yeah? The next position is, um, yep, is how you see your divine masculine and also how you're viewing your masculine energies within yourself. We have the two of cups. So the love is there. The love is really still there, but to be honest, if you are confused as to why you're not getting anything different, you're not getting anything different from your divine masculine, It's again, it's because you have to start seeing him as a different, him or her as a different version of themselves, okay? A different version than what you have been experiencing. And also, it is time, and you really have to work on um, um, your own healing. Because like I said before, the more you focus on your healing, the more you will influence your divine masculine to focus on their healing. And then when it comes to um, how you see your masculine energies, you are bonding. It might be a little rough. It might be a little tumultuous. It may have been throughout this Mercury in retrograde, but you're coming to a point now, Divine Feminine, where you're really starting to integrate the two sides of you, the masculine and the feminine. And that is in turn influencing your divine masculine to do the same. Yeah. Next in your storyline, we have the next position is where you are in relation to union. Now, this is relation to union with your twin, your divine counterpart, and or I'm sorry, your divine partner. And also where you are in relation to union with yourself. We have the six of pentacles. 
So Divine Feminine, you really have learned a lesson in the balance of give or take. I feel like you, you've come to a position where you are comfortable with not really giving much more until the Divine Masculine shows up in some way, however that resonates with you. And also, you are no longer going to give so much of yourself that you feel depleted in the end. You are really coming to terms with this lesson of balance between uh, um, uh, giving and receiving. Um, and honestly, Divine Feminine, you really are learning to receive. You are learning to become re comfortable with receiving. Um, in turn, that is influencing your Divine Masculine to the sense that... <clears throat> um, wow, another message just came through. But it's in, in turn... Again, influencing your divine masculine to deal with that lesson in his own, his or her own way. You know, um, there is another message coming through with the emperor in reverse. There are some of you divine feminines out there that are really letting go of control. Your need to control the situation. And it's for those of, that message is for those of you that have really sunk into um, the... Uh, really sunken into detachment, really become comfortable with detachment. I know that's where I am right now. Like I'm at a point where I'm, I'm detached enough where I just, for lack of a better term, I really just don't care when or how things are going to happen. You know, I've become very happy, very, very solid in my own independence. So I really don't need to know when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, what's going on with him, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I still do check in. Don't worry. I still check in, but because I'm concerned and I care. But at the same time, it's like, okay, I really just don't need to know. You know, most of the time I check in because I'm guided to. But at the same time, it's like, I don't need to know. And there are a lot of you divine feminines that I'm connecting with right now that are reaching that point. And that's really, really good. Okay. Moving forward, this is what you would like your twin to know. We have the Three of Swords. Three of Swords. Um... What are you what are you saying, Divine Feminine? You're saying that uh I mean for the most part you're leaving this three of swords energy behind. Yeah, I really see some of you divine feminines like, okay, look, like whatever. I mean, the three of swords is not in reverse. Um but it's also it's not it's really not saying that anything new has really transpired especially in relation to the rest of the cards. Now we have this with right on top of the all gifted and the two of cups. I really feel like this is some this is some divine feminine saying that you're using whatever heartbreak you've been going through to number one, heal, but number two, propel you on your journey to be of service to people. That's what the three of swords and the two of cups on top of the all gifted is saying. It's like this is helping you... Um, figure out how you want to be of service to people. So in a way, this I know this is this is really this is really going to sound weird, but in a way some of you divine feminines are even saying thank you. You're like you're you're thanking your your divine masculine, you're thanking God and the universe and all that for bringing all of these situations to you so that you can learn, heal, grow and be a better version of yourself and now move forward with life and do something with it. Yeah. That's really great, Divine Feminine. Um, what's crowning you, your uh, current challenge, what you're thinking about, what you're manifesting? We have Seven of Pentacles. Yeah. Now, some people say that this is a procrastination card. I'm not really picking that up here. What I'm getting here mostly for you, Divine Feminine, is, um, you know, you're taking stock. You really are, especially with this Three of Swords energy and how it's being represented right now. You're really looking back, taking responsibility, and see and working. If you're not quite there yet, you're working on seeing things how they really are. Okay, like cutting away the bullshit, like saying, "Okay, now what did I do to sow the seeds?" And you know, what are what really is the fruit of my labor right now? And how can I bear better? How can I grow better fruit fruit in the future? This is also connected to those of you that are working on seeing a different view of your Divine Masculine. 
um, because you're starting to realize how you have perpetuated the situation yourself on in your own way by continuing to, to you know to repeat these these circumstances and these thoughts and running them over and over in your head. You know what I mean? And I really feel like once you come to terms with things, once you really get to the root of some of these situations and really start to find the what has led you to where you are right now, that is when the wheel of fortune will turn upright and start moving back in your favor and faster. The other message of the wheel of fortune is... Um, is to let go of timelines. Timeline is what I just heard. Um, there's a time. There are some of you, some divine feminines out there that are still really attached to a timeline and a specific way that things should should happen. Um, and in turn, that would turn the emperor or your divine masculine in reverse. It would put blockages or resistance because you're not allowing the universe to really flow the way it's meant to. Divine timing is at play, guys. And I know, I know you don't want to hear that anymore. None of us do. But honestly, if you feel, if you get really irritated when you hear that, then that's a sign that you really need to work on detaching more. You really need to work on letting go of the circumstances and just focusing on what it is you truly want, truly desire, and letting go of how it's represented, how it's showing up to you in your life right now, letting go of how it's you're going to receive it, letting go of... Um, how it's going to work out, when it's going to work out, and all that. Keep in mind, remember that you have a good foundation. And always stay, at, that's what the Four of Wands is, Wands is saying, and please, please, please keep that connection with your intuition. Even though there is a lot that's hidden from you right now, don't worry about that. If you don't know it right now, you don't need to know. So just let it go, because you're just going to stress you out more worrying about what it is you don't know and what you have to figure out. Just you know, focus on what you do know. And as time goes on, if you come up to something that you want to know more about, contemplate it a little bit. If an answer doesn't come to you right away, that's okay. Maybe it'll come to you later. Maybe it won't. Just detach from it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right? Finally, we have what is in your undercurrent? What is the driving force? What is in the undertow for you, Divine Feminine? We have Eight of Cups. Yeah. Eight of Cups is just... is. There are a lot of you divine feminines that are really working on leaving the old paradigm behind. That is really a good thing. And I do see a lot of you willfully walking into the unknown with all kinds of mystery around you, not really caring about what you know about the situation, really tapping into your intuition and letting that drive you forward instead of being methodic, too methodical or egoic about it and saying it has to be one way or another. No, it doesn't actually. Oh, it only has to be the way that it's meant to, that it's the way that it's destined to, the way that it was designed to. And I really feel a lot of us divine feminines are walking away from um, the old paradigm. And that's really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. Um, I, I'm telling you, this Mercury in retrograde has been really, it's been rough, but it's been really good. Very good at healing. The King of Cups is here. Mm. I'm just feeling so much, that's just, uh, that's the divine masculine saying, hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> um, yeah, I just feel a lot of loving energy from the King of Cups there. Like, he's really getting ready, which is beautiful. Okay, so let's get into your animal spirit card for this reading. You get back there. One more shuffle. Okay. All right. Best message for the Divine Feminine at this time. There it is. We have Snake. This is a really pretty card. I love the colors in here. All right. Snake for the Divine Feminine. Okay. Give me just a second here. 
There we are, snake. Guardian of unawakened magic and creative potential. The snake is a symbol of our highest potential. It is said that Shakti, our creative life force, lies dormant at the base of our spine in the form of a coiled snake. Regardless of whether this image rings true for you, it's well worth considering the amount of unawakened or untapped potential within. What would life look like if you woke it up? How, could, how can you stir it from slumber? An experienced yoga or meditation teacher can lead the way. Make haste. The snake card appears when there's no more time to waste. When in balance, snake is prosperous, creative, and charismatic. When out of balance, snake starts and stops many things. To bring into balance, one can do kundalini yoga and meditation. Now, honestly, snake and all and the all gifted are speaking of the same thing. Are talking about the divine feminine really getting deeper into connection with who she truly is and what it is you could be doing in this world to to fulfill your greatest potential. I really feel like Divine Feminine, you are going through a period where you're deepening your connection to um, your life purpose. For some, for some, that might be repelling your Divine Masculine. Um, and it's not like you're actively doing that on purpose. It's This is a really weird concept, but bear with me for a second. Because I do feel like as some Divine Feminines are really coming into their power, it is repelling their Divine Feminine or Divine Masculine in a way. But that's because it's repelling their egoic self. This is, it's almost like it's causing an eruption within the Divine Masculine of by which... Their egos are feeling the shift in your energy and they're, they're don't, they don't like it because they know, the ego knows that this is going to then influence them to change things and then the ego is going to lose a lot of power that they once had. So that's also why the, the emperor is coming up in reverse. That's also why there's a bit of resistance to the wheel in reverse. Um, and when it comes to the wheel of fortune in reverse... Again, it's this resistance due to the fact that things are really changing and certain individuals don't want to lose power. <laughs> That's pretty much just all it is. All right. So that's that. That's for you, Divine Feminine. Let's get into Divine Masculine, shall we? That sounds like fun. So bear with me, guys. I am just going to reshuffle a little bit. I do want to use the same deck. I really love this deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get into this for the Divine Masculine. Please, Spirit, please, please, please make me a clear channel for all Divine Masculines. Let's bring forward the best messages for the Divine Masculine at this moment in time. Thank you so much, Spirit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do this. Mm-hmm. Divine Masculine. All right, one more shuffle. Divine Masculine is ready. They want to talk, so let's talk, yeah? Oops. All right, let's cut the deck. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. So we already have some mirroring going on, okay? So this is, we're, we're in the overall energy here. Lordy. The Emperor. I literally, you guys just watched me shuffle this, right? The Seven of Pentacles and the Three of Swords <laughs> with, with the Ten of Swords in reverse. All right, guys, you literally saw me, you saw me shuffle that, right? Okay, you saw me shuffle. Um, so what's what's going on here? We've got, yeah, so, yeah. And it's funny because this is exactly what I have been feeling over this past week. I've been, as a Divine Feminine, I've been very good in myself, solid in my energy, know where I am, know where I stand, I know what's going on. Even though there was a lot of questioning, I still know what's going on. Um, and this is why 
the divine masculine's energy was really showing up in the divine feminine's energy. Because as the divine feminine has been affecting the divine masculine, so now the divine masculine is affecting the divine feminine. So most of the energy that's coming from the resistance is coming from the divine masculine at the moment. They are going through some major changes and they are really in reversal to it. Um, but here, this is really just an ego battle, okay? Um, they're learning, or I'm sorry, Divine Masculine, you are learning um, a hard lesson in control. You're learning that you really can't control everything. The only thing that you can really control is yourself and your actions. You cannot control the actions of anyone else around you, and that includes your Divine Feminine. And you're, some, of, some of you Divine Masculines are really coming to a hard lesson with that. Um, you may have been trying to control things up until now, and it's really just done nothing but give you Three of Swords energy in return. Heartbreak. Yeah. I mean, it, it really has just... Now, I'm not going to say that the Divine Feminine hasn't really tried to control things either, but this mostly has been coming from the masculine energies. But here, Divine Masculine, you are kind of in a, in a place where you're you're analyzing it Okay, you do have the Seven of Pentacles. This can talk about procrastination, but that's not really what I'm feeling here. I'm feeling more of a, an analytical sense, like just like the Divine Feminine, so you're like, okay, well, how did I get here? And how can I grow better fruit in the future? But then with the Ten of Swords in reverse, it's like some of you are still in resistance to letting this go. You're, I, I kind of see some of you just spinning around in circles in this energy of the Ten of Swords because you still don't want to let something go. You still don't want to release control in some situations. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, I mean, I get it. But you can't. we can't control everything. You can't control, you definitely can't control the universe. Although, you know, you do have control over what you manifest by telling the universe what you want. But um, you can't, I mean, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. Let's just move forward. So in your first position, this is your surrounding energies. The moon. Yeah. There's a lot of... Some of, some of you divine masculines, you might be going through a dark night of the soul. That's what I just picked up with the moon. Um, but there's a lot of illusion around you. Things are not as they seem. Um, you're going through a pretty dark period right now where a lot of your life is actively being shifted. Um, you know, there's a lot of movement around you, but you don't really know what that movement is at the moment. And that's okay. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of darkness. But you are being um, guided, you are being reminded to use this newfound in, uh, a connection with your intuition that you have been developing lately, yes? Moving forward, we have um, how you're seeing your twin and how you're seeing your connection with your feminine energies. We have, ooh, the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Um, this very much has to do with the controlling aspect of things. Um, many of you Divine Masculines have been so controlling that you have literally turned your, your Divine Feminine upright, uh, not upright, reversed. And it's very hard to turn the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. You know, she's very caring, she's very passionate, or a uh, uh, patient, uh, loving, compassionate. But if you push her too far, then eventually she'll get pissed. And in a lot of cases, the Divine Feminine is pissed right now. Like, is act, I, see, I see in this Queen of Pentacles reversed, I see your Divine Feminine actively pushing you away. And... Um... I'm not going to say it's all your fault, but you do have some responsibility to take, to bear in that. And some of you are at odds with your feminine energies. And this, again, has to do with control. Um, the way you have tried to control external, external situations is also the way that you have been trying to control your internal situation. And... This type of control is not for the benefit of all. It's just stifling. Like literally pushing it out, stuffing it down, trying to silence it um, when you know it's speaking up or it's showing up for, you know, your highest good. But that twisted masculine energy just was not having it. 
And so it pushed it away. And so in return, that's what was reflected in your external situation with your divine feminine. And so now she's like, fine, I'm going to push you away now. And I'm not saying that's right. What I'm saying is that's the reality of the situation. And that's what you guys have to work through at the moment. Okay. Um, this next card, your next position is where are you in relation to union with your twin? And also where are you in relation to union with yourself? Ace of Swords in reverse. So there is a truth that needs to come out here that's just not coming out. Not being seen, not being accepted, Divine Masculine. There, uh, and, and this is directly connected to the Emperor. It's also right underneath the moon. It's almost like you're seeking for some sort of truth, but you don't like the answer, so you're not accepting it. And so then that in turn is turn is pushing you into like a darker aspect of things because the more you resist the truth that is being presented to you, the darker things are going to get. Who's calling me? Um, the darker things are going to get. So it's like a self, it's like a self perpetuating, self-fulfilling prophecy in a sense, because the more you push away this truth, the, the, the more you just push everything away, okay? You have to come to terms with the fact that there are, things, there are some things that you need to accept. And the biggest thing you need to accept right now, Divine Masculine, is that you cannot control everything. You cannot control everyone, okay? Moving forward, how you, or what you would like to say to your twin, what you want your twin to know, we have the King of Swords. Very interesting. The King of Swords is coming out upright. Um... Uh, if you hear anything in the background, that's my roommate. Yay. Um, or one of my roommates. So the king, what is the king of swords saying? The king of swords is saying, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. Okay. I'm trying to see things for what they really are. I'm trying. And I want you to know that I'm trying. Um, but I'm just not seeing it right now. I'm really just not seeing it right now. And that's okay. I mean, with the moon here, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Things are kind of shady. Things are kind of clouded. You might be in a dark night of the soul, so you really can't see much. But there is a lot that, divide, that you're coming to terms with right now, divine, divine Masculine. And in some situations, it is turning the Divine Feminine... Oh, 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 oh. In some situations, it is turning the Divine Feminine uh, uh, reversed. But actually, now that I'm looking at the King of Swords um, and the Queen of Pentacles together, the Queen of Pentacles could also be speaking to some karmic relationships here. There could be some of you that are actively like looking at the situation with your karmic partner, and that could be why there's the Three of Swords energy here also. Interesting. Um, I mean, I'm not really looking to dive into that situation so much because honestly, that's Divine Masculine, that's your situation. And um, I really don't feel like it's our place to have much, in, much if any, involvement in that as Divine Feminines. But um, I am seeing you, I, I'm hearing some of you are being over analytical. But at the same time, like the, the King of Swords is not reversed. The King of Swords is upright. So it's not too much of that. There's just a lot of thinking going on right now. There has been a lot of thinking going on. Um, and I feel like this new moon in Aries is going to help. Um, it's going to help a lot. Yeah. Okay. So in the next position, we have uh, what's crowning you. Um, you. What are you manifesting? What are your current challenges, Divine Masculine? Judgment. Yes. And actually, this is a really good thing to see at this moment um, because it, it's what it's saying to me is that everything that is happening here is being influenced by a, an ascension stage, phase even, if you will. Um, there's a higher calling being heard, um, you are ascending, uh, Divine Masculine, you are waking up, you're awakening, and so you're really having to deal with, and this actually is why you're going through this major ego battle right now, because you are, you are kind of juxtapositioned between the person you were in the past with the person that you're being called to be now in the future, and it is a struggle. 
don't get me wrong. The ego will <laughs> will kick and scream the whole way, but you know what? Eventually, eventually spirit wins. Period. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it to you. Finally, what's uh under what's in your undertow, divine masculine? Uh, the undercurrent we have two of pentacles. Excellent. So balance. Even though things, even though there's like a ton of resistance right now, even though things don't look on the up and up and whatever, um, ultimately there's still balance in the end. And I really like seeing the two of pentacles and judgment in these two places because it means that you're bounded, you're bounded, you're grounded and balanced physically and you are ascending, you are hearing the calling spiritually. So that's good. That is, that is in the face of all this like weird, confusing energy and conflicting messages and whatnot, this is, these two cards here are um, good. Very good to see. Okay, so let's get into your, um, and the Ten of Swords reverse, yeah. So let's get into your Animal Spirit card for this week. Yes, Divine Masculine? Or, well, it's not necessarily for this week. It's just more for this reading, yeah? Because these, I'm not really putting time in these readings. So. All right. Divine Masculine. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got for you? Okay. All right, Spirit, best messages for the Divine Masculine at this time. Okay, Divine Masculine, you get two. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> First, we have Tarantula. And next, we have Panther. And Panther is coming out reversed. I haven't gotten a reversal in this deck yet, but I'm going to work with it for now and see what we get. These are two fire signs, I believe. Yeah. Fire! Fire! We got... All right, Panther is here first. But Tarantula... Let's do Tarantula first. At a crossroads, claiming life's purpose. The Tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose, purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is sidetracking you from your dream, yet a voice inside keeps begging you to, refu to refocus your attention. In order to find true happiness, you must choose dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. The tarantula hovers patient and calm like an old friend that knows your inner soul. It already knows you'll choose wisely. When in balance, tarantula follows intuition. With out of balance, tarantula hesitates and over intellectualizes. See, I was saying that. So some, and that was coming out with the King of Swords. Some of you are being over analytical here. You are favoring your analytical side for in favor of um, oh, and in, in or you're favoring uh, analytics and, and and logic over emotion and intuition. Okay. Uh, to bring tarantula into balance, one must do some daily journaling. So this is absolutely, tarantula is talking about this ego battle that you're feeling, that you're going through right now, Divine Masculine. Um, you know, your ego is not going to want you to choose Dharma. Your ego is going to want you to choose all the physical things that you've been pursuing your life in your life up until now. Because why? It thinks it's going to get more satisfaction from it. But that's not the case. Obviously, that's not the case. You know that. You've been going through this situation for how long now? And you're not satisfied. And that you've finally come to a point, Divine Masculine, where you're like, no, I'm, this is never going to satisfy me. Why am I still doing this? Why don't I just do something new now? Right? Okay. See? I know you get it. <laughs> Next, we have Panther. And Panther is in reverse. Yeah. Annihilation of the unnecessary. Purging. The panther won't stand to see our growth or energy stagnate. Instead, it pounces into our lives and causes all kinds of havoc, with the ultimate intention of bringing us toward more fulfilling lives. It's unexpected, uncomfortable, and sometimes feels devastating, but after all the dust clears, it's easy to see the panther's wisdom at work. We've all been through these experiences, and they've made us better people. Trust that the panther's journey always leads to a brighter place. 
When in balance, Panther is brave and productive. When out of balance, Panther is self-destructive. To bring into balance, get rid of the unnecessary. I mean, hello, those messages go hand in hand. Now, Panther is in reverse because that energy is um, being blocked. Okay, you have the opportunity, and that's what judgment is saying here. You have the opportunity to fix this stuff, to heal this stuff, and to move forward but you're blocking that energy that's going to actually help you propel you, propel you forward, help propel you forward. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's all I want to say. So there it is, guys. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you guys for our next conversation next week. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm blanking out a little bit, but I'm trying, I'm just trying to figure out if there's anything else that is connected with this. Do you guys like my new t-shirt? Wait, you, wait, you gotta see my new t-shirt. It says, I'm, I'm sorry I'm late, my unicorn was sitting on me. <laughs> I love this shirt. Okay, guys, I love you all. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later. Bye!